Hello, everybody. Caitlin here in Mexico right now. Um, I'm going to get right to it. So this is the dream that the Lord gave me on the morning of 824. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just read it right from my notebook. I was in a large auditorium. I was going to give a speech. And so I don't know if you guys have seen my first video about the Lord giving me basically a platform to give a speech and that first dream he gave me when I was in Florida. So I believe that this is a follow-up dream to that first dream. So if you have not had a chance yet to watch that first video, I think I titled it like most important video I've made so far. Um, and that was in June, but I can, I can tag that video here, but this is the, the follow-up dream that the Lord gave me two months later now. Okay. So I was in a large auditorium. I was going to give a speech. And I was dressed up um, and the auditorium was very crowded. Like it was packed um, and it almost looked like an, a gymnasium. And I say that because there were some bleachers, but then at the same time, there was also, it looked like, um, like a theater in the sense that there was also a balcony level. Um, so there's like a gymnasium because of the, the bleachers, but then also there was a, a second level with the balcony with seats that were high up. So I was sitting, it's like before I could see everything, it's like I was almost sitting on like a shelf because I was kind of like crouched down and there was something covering my head and I was like bending over like this, trying to give my speech, but then there was also a person that kind of assisting me and I, I just told the person, I was like, I think I need to get off of this shelf so that I'm not like bent over underneath this covering. So I hop off of the, the shelf and then I go out to where I can like stand up. And then now when I'm standing up, I can see everything. And, and all of these little details guys are there. There's, there's a meaning behind them. So that's why I, I share these details while I like in, in the videos. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll explain all of that after I get through the dream. So I get out from underneath the covering that, um, and then once I'm standing up and I'm standing up tall, then I can see all the people. Um, so I get off the shelf and I stand on the ground, um, and my posture was no longer hindered and now I could stand up and I could see everybody. So as I began to give this speech, so I was like, now I'm like addressing everyone. And I was like, hello everybody. And right as I was about to give the speech, um, a woman I know, she was dressed so beautifully and she, she got up from her, the bleachers and she walked over to me and I think she was pregnant. Um, and she was like in a delicate condition and she had a belly, you know, and, um, and she said, I just want to say that you look so beautiful. She said that to me. And then she went and sat down and I just thought, wow, like it, it made me very emotional. And, um, I was very appreciative and I just, so as I was about to say, oh, like I really appreciated that comment before I could say that another person got up from a little bit over on another area of seating. Um, and this person and all these people, I know all of them. I'm not going to say who they are, but all these people are people from my past, whether from high school, from college, from a student that I taught to family members, to family friends, to then a person that I don't really know who that last person is. But anyways, every single person, except for one, I know who they are. <laughs> so I'm, I might, and they also, sometimes they can represent themselves and they can also represent, um, different things in the spirit. So anyways, so then the second person, he came up and he had a notebook and he had written down, he basically said, I want to share with you what you're, what you're sharing, even though I hadn't even started sharing yet. He's like, I want to share what you're sharing is very similar to, you know, this God and on his, on his notebook, on his sketchbook, he had all these different gods. And so even though I wasn't, you know, entirely agreeing with what he was saying, I was still quiet because I wanted to let him speak. Well, as he was trying to basically very intellectually and also very politely um, share a person in the bleachers to my right stood up and basically just starts mocking him. So he stands up and he starts saying like, that's not, you know, he starts mocking him. And then I just say, you know, please be quiet because I wanted this person to be able to share. I mean, this person had the floor, I guess. I mean, even though, it was my speech. I was allowing him to share. 
But then someone in the bleachers started mocking this person. So then I said, please be quiet. Um, and then I turned back to this person and then he kind of started stumbling a little bit on what he was trying to convey. And then back to the person who was mocking him in the bleachers, a woman behind him starts saying, you always do this. Like you're always, basically she's getting mad because she believes this person is always mocking people. And then the person who was doing the original mocking also starts laughing at that person. So he's also laughing and mocking the person who had the sketchbook. And then at the same time, a commotion starts now between the mocker and the woman behind him who wanted there to be, you know, like order. She starts, you know, starting this commotion with the person who was mocking. So then eventually the mocking dies down, the commotion dies down. And the person who had the sketchbook, he just kind of looks defeated and he walks back to the bleachers. So then I said, okay, so then I start again, trying to give my speech. I was going to say, this is a very important speech that I'm going to give. I was going to say, this is a very powerful speech. So then, right, as I said, this is a very powerful speech. Someone, a woman dressed in white on the top balcony bleachers, she looks down at me and she has her arms open wide like this. And she says, what did she say? I actually didn't even read, I just. She said, I want to be free. And, um, and I start looking at her and she says, she, her arms are like this and she's wearing all white. She has like long, dirty blonde hair. I want to be free. And then she like motions toward the balcony and then she jumps off the balcony and I'm like motioning over, I'm putting my arms out like this. And it's like, and she said, she said, save me. So as she's jumping down and I'm putting my arms out to try to catch her and she says, save me. The moment that my hands go to touch her is the same exact moment that her body hits the ground. And it's like my hands were on the ground and her body like goes through my hands on the ground and she like, disappears and it's just her white gown on the floor in between my hands and then I wake up so okay there's a lot to this <clears throat> sorry this lighting is crazy this Mexico sun man I'm like underneath this too and it's just like I'm not really digging this this angle but anyways um so that was a lot to that <sighs> So one, I want to start off by saying, where, am I, where do I even begin? Um, initially, me like underneath having something covered, the Lord has been, the Lord has been hiding me, right? The Lord has been, I, I've been in a place where I have not yet been like fully revealed, I guess you could say, or like um, the calling has still been like, like the shelf is what I'm talking about, where I was like kind of crouched down, not like fully standing up right so the lord's going to be moving me from this position where i am out into like a large auditorium or whatever it is basically from like not hiding but in this season that i've been in i'm going to be coming into a new season um and what that's going to do one if you guys can tell all these different people represent a different type of spiritual warfare or a different condition in their a different place in their faith um for me the lord is giving me authority to speak a powerful message. This powerful message that I'm going to be speaking is going to wrestle the feathers of different spirits. Um, it's going to cause those who are birthing in the spirit, right? So the very first woman who was pregnant, I know this, this term is going to sound weird to the, if you've never heard it before, but a pregnancy in a dream can symbolize like birthing something in the spirit. Basically, it just means that like you're, you're, you're being transformed. Okay. You're, you're kind of going from the old man to the new man. Um, you're birthing something new, like something new is coming from you. So anyways, this woman who was pregnant, she wanted to share, she wanted to encourage me and tell me that I was beautiful. Look at, we, we had such unity. We were very united in the spirit. There was no offense. Uh, she, she, she's like being birthed in the spirit, right? She's moving from like the flesh into the spirit. Okay moving from the old man to the new man, living by the inner man, which is by the Holy Spirit. Because remember guys, actually a scripture I wanted to share really quick is in 
2 Thessalonians, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. The Lord God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So guys, we need to, we need to, this is the, the surrender comes in. When you surrender to Christ and you allow, allow him to do a work in you and you want to be transformed and you want to be sanctified, we're, we're going to be attaining, we're, we're called to obtain the glory. We're called to obtain the glory of the Lord, okay? We're chosen to salvation through sanctification of the spirit. So, be, so birthing in the spirit, that's just us, you know, being transformed to, to obtain the glory of the Lord. Okay. All right. So anyways, that's what that first woman represented. Then, as you can see, I'm trying to give the speech, but my speech continues to be interrupted. So the next person was the person who wanted to share something. Okay. So this can, this can, this can show that when what, a powerful speech that I'm going to give or any, anyone who's preaching the gospel, anyone who's preaching the good news, you're going to run into different types of people who are going to have a different type of response based on their own surrender, based on their condition of their heart, based on whatever type of spiritual change they might be in, um, based on their knowledge, right? We can have head knowledge, but not yet. Like we, the, the, the word can be written in our minds, but now the Lord wants to write it on our hearts, right? So until the word is written on our hearts, um, we have a lot of head knowledge. Or if you're in a different type of religion and you're very into comparative religions, for example, this the man who had the drawings of the gods, he had very good intentions. His intentions was to learn. Um, he had not yet received the truth to set him free. He's still trying to learn from worldly knowledge. Um, he, he's very into comparative religions, comparative languages, comparative ideologies. Um, and I believe that's not coming from a bad place. I believe that's coming from him seeking the truth. And once he receives the truth, the truth shall set him free. So if you can tell, if, if that other spirit of religion, the one that was trying to mock him, would have been quiet... I could have listened to what this man was saying. This was an opportunity for this man to come up, show me what his thoughts were on these different gods. And I could have explained to him about Jesus and about how I could have, it was an opportunity to witness to him, to tell him the good news. But instead, as you can see now on the bleachers, the man who stood up and started mocking him, that's the spirit of religion. Legalism, spirit of religion, mocking, Okay, calling things blasphemy. So that's what he was doing. And then what did it do? It put this person who was trying to learn, it put him down. So how, see how the spirit of religion put down that person, okay? And then the woman behind the man who had the spirit of religion, she had her own, I already know exactly who these people are. It's so funny. Um, but anyway, so they start a commotion. But what does this mean? It's, it's a distraction. It's a distraction. All of this is a distraction. I mean, except for the very first one where she was showing, oh, like you look so beautiful, right? There was like such a union there. She was being birthed in the spirit. We understand each other. She thinks it's beautiful. The precious pearl, right? That, that we don't wanna throw our pearls to swine. She knows the value of that precious pearl. Okay, to her, preaching the world is beautiful. She's birthing in the spirit this herself. Okay, so then anyways, then the, the, the comparative guy who wants to learn about comparative religions, he gets shut down. So that, that kind of ruined his opportunity to receive salvation in that moment. I could have led him into a prayer of salvation, for example, or I could have opened his eyes to something, or I could have planted a seed and watered a seed, a good seed that could grow, but it was thwarted by that spirit of religion that was mocking him. So then, and remember, the spirit of religion is only going to come from people who are inside the church. People who are not in church, they're of the world. They're not going to have a spirit of religion. But see how the spirit of religion can prevent those people from receiving the good news? Okay, so then we have... Um, then the woman. The woman who was wearing white. Who basically jumped to her death. But this is spiritual. And I promise you, it's actually going to be a good thing. Okay? So, this woman... What was she saying? She said, I want to be free. Okay, so she had some type of chain on her, some type of spiritual chain, some type of bondage, some type of yoke of slavery. She wants to be free. Her heart is to be free. 
She's wearing white. She wants to be free. Yet, she said, save me, and she jumped off. What caused her to jump off? That bondage, that yoke, that, that spirit of death caused her to jump. But she jumped toward me. What do I re represent? I represent, honestly, the anointing, the, the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit is the chain breaker to break those chains. So as soon as she jumped to me and I put my hands out to grab her, that was the death of that spirit. So, so her, the moment that she touched me was the death of that spirit, okay? So it's not the death of her, it's the death of that spirit. It's, it's, it's the chain breaking that, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's the yoke, I'm sorry, it's the Holy Spirit breaking that yoke of bondage. Now, and, and, and I would like to pray for the Lord to, to, you know, show me that woman in her new light, but it symbolized that when you're in bondage and you encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit, you are going to be free. Okay, so that, that, that's going to be a, a new birth for her. It's going to be the death of her old life, the death of that, that spirit of whatever bondage that was, that spirit of death trying to take her. But she knew that she needed saving because she was in a spiritual change. She was in a yoke of bondage. So as soon as she touched my hands, bam, that, like, it, it was the death of that spirit. It was that, I hope this makes sense. So any anyway, guys, it's already 16 minutes. Um, I just want to share that there's, there's so many different things going on. Spiritual warfare. I hope that this video was able to take you through the different states that people are in, in terms of their walk and their faith, in terms of what type of spiritual chain they're encountering. Um, and the spirit of religion likes to hide. Look at, see how the spirit of religion was just in the bleachers trying to support me? Yet the spirit of religion does not allow for like a dialogue to happen in love. I was trying to have a dialogue with this man in love, but that spirit of religion thwarted that. The spirit of religion, which it's not that person, it's the spirit behind that person. That person also needs deliverance of the spirit of religion. So we can be in these different, we can be operating with like different spirits and not even realize it. This is why we have to pray, Father, purify my heart. Father, if I need deliverance, like Holy Spirit, deliver me. I mean, get with a powerful person, a, a, a prayerful person. What I wanted to say that I totally got, I, I went on a tangent the other day and I didn't even finish what I was going to say is that I had been struggling with like feeling anger. Um, when my children were fighting and I started praying, father, deliver me, father, deliver me, father, deliver me, father, deliver me, Holy spirit, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, Jesus, deliver, del deliver me from this. And so I went with, um, two of my sisters in Christ who are powerful prayer warriors. We prayed over this. We prayed together and specifically as well for deliverance over, <laughs> over, um, just like anger. And now guys, praise God. The Lord's delivered me from that. Like now when my, my, my children are like fighting, they, that, that initial angry response that I was feeling, like it's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is why it's so important to pray with the, the body of Christ. Pray for deliverance for whatever you're struggling with. Okay. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. Pray for deliverance for whatever you're struggling with. Okay, where two or more are gathered together in Jesus's name, he is there in the midst of them. And whatever they, those two ask, Jesus will do to bring glory to the Father. Okay, so pray with another person for your needs in the name of Jesus. Pray for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Okay, all right, guys, God bless you. I pray this blesses you. Love you. Bye.